Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I am gonna share with you, if you don't know, if you don't follow me on Bridget Inspired on social media, Facebook and Instagram, or you don't follow me on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube, you might not know yet, but um, my grandma passed away. She went into the afterlife about a week ago, just had her funeral on Friday, the memorial service. And uh, she's in California, she was in California. So it's on my mom's side and she lived a long time. She was almost 98 this year. In June, she would have been 98. Mm -hmm. So when my mom transitioned into the, or my mom, whoa, my grandma transitioned into the afterlife. My mom was with her and there was some things that have come up for me personally because when someone leaves the human plane and goes into the afterlife, you get grief, comes up naturally, a sense of loss or a passing of the torch to another maybe generation or something. So like my mom's level now is all that's left because my grandma, my grandma and grandpa on their side have passed away. And so there's kind of like this lineage piece, this ancestral piece and this opportunity for uh, another level of grief to be processed. And so for me, my grandma passing away on my mom's side was something that triggered a release for me for more healing opportunity with my dad's death. And you may know this if you've watched the video about my life story here on Above Life Channel or if you've watched it on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube or on my website at AboveLifeChannel.com you know that my dad, when my dad died, it was two years after that that I got psychic or recognized that I was psychic and accepted my gifts and worked as a medium for quite some time, specifically focused on mediumship. And um, so that was a huge, profound thing for me, my dad's death. And there's a whole story around that. Check it out in the videos. And... When my grandma just left, it, it opened up some wounding around that because at the time of my dad's death, my dad died of AIDS and he died of AIDS because he was gay but wasn't living his life as a gay man. He was still married and very much hid the fact that he was gay, as far as I know. Like, I don't know if my mom knew or anything like that. Um, he died, like, it'll be 20 years ago this year. So it was a long time ago. I was, I think, 29 when he, yeah, 29 when he died. And um, very pregnant with my second child. And um, there was a lot because of the fact that dad had AIDS and how he got it um, that created a lot of uh, tension, intensity maybe, intensity, tension, yeah, tense, I'm gonna say tension. Um, with my mom's family, and not the, all of them, just with um, a few people. Um, my mom, I'm sure, leaned on her family for support, which makes sense because that's what you would do, right? And I don't know how much my mom like shared with them at that time. I don't know about all that stuff because I was busy. Like I already had a kid. I was having another baby. My husband at the time was in law school, and he had or he had just graduated law school and was studying for the bar exam, took the bar exam, and the next morning is when my dad died. So there was a lot going on in my family, my, my little family, my personal family. And so um, when my grandma died, it triggered some release of some additional awarenesses of pain and anger that I have um, about my dad's death because my grandma, my mom's mom, was um, very strong in her view and opinions about things and expressed that directly, as did another member of my mom's family, to my sister. I'm the oldest of three kids and my sister is the second um, in line, like right after me, like a year and a half or super close in age. And because I was all pregnant and busy with like trying to just have a baby and all that. Nobody like came at me for anything, but they came at my sister. And looking back, and she never told me. She did not tell me until like years later, 
like at least a couple of years later, if not many years later. And I remember when she told me, because I was driving through a neighborhood and it was really narrow streets. And I was like, wait, what? We were talking on the phone. I'm like, wait, wait, what? What? Like, I had no idea. Like, the very harsh, mean things that were said to her and also um, kind of passive aggressively to, she was the target. And because the idea was is that we weren't taking care of my mom enough or we weren't like standing by my mom or something, us kids. Um, excuse me, excuse me, what? Like during that time we were losing our dad. We were still in our 20s. We had little kids of our own. And my mom was quite capable of taking care of herself. You know, I mean, she's a strong woman. She can handle herself. She can handle herself. And I'm sure as a mama bear protector, my grandma was probably like just doing what she felt was right or best or sticking up for my mom. And really she didn't need to do that because we were not the enemy of the children. So yeah, I'm gonna share with you my personal stuff today. And yeah, I might have family members that watch this and yeah, won't that be interesting? It's part of my healing process. And this is what happens when people transition and move into the afterlife. You get the opportunity to relieve some of the pain that you've been carrying your whole life or some of the blame for stuff that isn't even yours. And turns out that sometimes anger that you have shows up where it's like, if I would have known that at the time, people, let me tell you, I would have been all up in that. <laughs> I would have been right there protecting my siblings from that energy. Because like I said, my mom is a strong woman. She can handle herself. She didn't take care of herself. We were the children losing our dad. The fact that we weren't supporting our mom enough is shocking to hear that. I don't know how my sister did it all these years, still like trying to be kind and nice and get along with, you know, grandma and stuff and just, you know, like that's just what's expected. People can talk to you horrifically and treat you badly and blame you for all sorts of things that you, we were children. When that whole uh, scenario with my mom and dad and their marriage, like that's between them, not us. Not her family. Now, that was between those two grown adults, right? And the focus should have been on the fact that we were losing a parent. A parent was dying. But there was not compassion for that. So had I known that, I would have been so, I mean, I wish I, I mean, it's probably really, it's really good that I didn't. Let's just say that. because I would have definitely made things worse. I just would have, come on you guys, come on. You can't tell me you wouldn't have said something. I would have so said something. Everybody's on Facebook, I gotta just post something on Facebook and oh my God, people are up in arms and nobody will come to you directly in your family of origin. If they're like way older people, nobody ever talks directly to you, they talk behind your back and stuff. Or on your posts, like publicly, they might say something like, wow. That's not what happened. I'm like, oh, really? But sure as heck is how it feels. My point is, death is dramatic <laughs> as much as it is traumatic, but it gives the opportunity for a new layer of grief to come up and you rip that Band-Aid off and I'm like, my dad and my grandma are having conversation in the afterlife and that's whatever is between them and that's just an opportunity then for me to set this down and not even have to carry it anymore or think about it, you know? There's probably someone in your life that you've had really, you've had some kind of experience somewhere like this with. It might not be directly to your face, but you're know, like, you're the black sheep of the family or that would be me probably. I mean, I, I assume it is, you know, I'm a psychic and I mean, I'm just, I mean, it's probably totally me. I just love uh, I'll accept that. That's fine. I don't really have an issue with that. <laughs> you know, it's like, whatever. Social norms are weird anyway, so whatever. But you probably have had some kind of experience like this too. And it's not just to make you nuts and make you angry and upset and 
and hurt. Because it was hard. Because we grew up going to California and visiting relatives there and loving people who, when we were in a time of like the worst experience of our lives, losing our parent was really, really hard at that point. It wasn't about choosing sides, one parent over the other. How do you do that? Like, that's not what it's about. That's not what it was about. The heart has the capacity, tremendous the capacity to love many at once and in different ways. If you have more than one child, you understand this. You love them all, but in different ways, right? That's just normal, you guys. Don't feel bad. Don't let other people's stories or their own lack or misunderstanding or misguided good intentions, whatever that might be, don't let that be your story. Don't let it be your story. That's what we learn here on Above Life Channel week after week after week, don't we? We learn insights from the afterlife. We get inspired in our spirit. And we focus on hope. We focus on hope. And sometimes the way to the hope is through that pain that shows up for you to spend some time with that. Maybe to get a counselor to talk. I talked this week to my counselor about it. And maybe, you know, journal about it or talk to your life coach about it or maybe do a shaman journey, talk to a healer, get some energy work done or body work done so you're not holding it inside you because that stuff can make you sick can make you physically sick when it manifests. You don't want that. I know it's hard. It's not easy when this stuff comes up. It brings you right back to that place in your life that you do not want to be and you don't want to remember and you don't want to figure out. But now it's like, finally, I feel like, wow, my cousins and stuff, people that I just love and adore, maybe now will understand why I didn't go to all the picnics when grandma was making her rounds. <laughs> because it's just hard to like rally behind a matriarch when... There's a lot of hurt there too underneath, you know? So now I have to work on forgiveness. And it wasn't even directly for, to me, you know? But there's a lot of other stuff. It's not just this one issue thing, but there's this opportunity that this opens up for me, much like with you, to, to heal. To heal again in, in, in a, a more beautiful way, in a way of love. And I've been working on um, energy of compassion. I actually have a beautiful pink rose here that I got because I, if you follow me on, on a fairy grasshopper, you know that um, I work with divine feminine energies a lot and I'm working with an essential oil and doing some anointing um, practices things with the Rosa Mystica temple, um, priestess presence with Elaine uh, Kalila Doughty. And... Um, Diana Duboro, who created the Emerald Temple Oils as well. These beautiful oils. EmeraldTemple.com. EmeraldTempleOils.com. EmeraldTempleOils.com. Very connected to Divine Feminine. But it's also about, it's about being willing to work in the shadow with the pain. And it's not for punishment. It's not because life is supposed to be hard. It's because we get the opportunity to shed old versions of ourselves and step into the new. That's what Above Life Channel is about. And this energy of this hot pink this week, we started in our compassion oil and focusing on compassion. And this hot pink, that's what it reminds me of. That's what it's a symbol of, compassion. So I gift it to you today to be willing to address a place in your life with compassion for you, not about other people, just for you, where you might find your way to a level of forgiveness or a peaceful understanding so that you can feel better, so you can understand that, it, that the situation didn't happen because you're bad or you did something wrong necessarily. That's not, that's not helpful to, to focus on things you can't change now at this point, but to integrate the compassionate energy, the energy of compassion for your heart space, for you as an empath as you walk through this, this world, this life.
So I actually am going to have a clearing um, with a very trusted friend of mine who's an incredible healer clearer. She actually has a shop in New Hampshire, in Dover, New Hampshire. So if you're in Dover, New Hampshire, or nearby there, stop at Earth Harmony Wellness Center and the Oasis Shop. The Oasis Shop, she's got a rock shop, right? I get my rocks from her. I purchase my rocks from her and like my grids. If you wanna know more about this kind of cool stuff that I do and work with, you gotta follow Fairy Grasshopper YouTube, you guys. You just gotta follow it. Just gotta follow it, cause that's, that's what's up, okay? Um, I'm looking for the, oh, I have this beautiful, I got this when I was there too on one of my trips there too, look at that. An obelisk, yes, black tourmaline, thank you very much, yes. So, I'm gonna have a clearing. Reset my energetic grids, and it's a distance kind of healing session. And work that I do for people from time to time, by request usually, I don't have it like, as a service, you have to request that and then we'll have a conversation about what that would entail. But I'm gonna receive that to help me, you know, on my path to, as a person, as a human. So you need that kind of support too and you deserve that kind of support too. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. We all do. So this week, the video on Above Life Channel is literally about me experiencing grief and addressing a hurt or pain, how to clear away that past, how to recognize and honor the feelings and emotions, and how to find compassion for myself in the process of that. Because I'm in the process. I'm not at the end of that. I'm, not, I'm by no means a master of that whole scenario situation. But I'm willing to be in the process and I'm willing to sit with the, the trauma of it. And it's not easy to do that. And I know it's not easy for many of you. And I know our grief and our losses are different. But there's no better or no worse than, than each other. That's not, that's not what it is. It's not like your grief is worse than my grief because you're grieving a cat and I'm grieving a person. No, grief is grief. A wound is wound and pain is pain. Pain is pain. And, and it has a purpose. It does, yeah, it's part of the process. So. so there you go, Above Life Channelers. Thanks so much for being here this week. No channeling video officially today. Just not, I'm just not in a place to do it right now. I'm just not, I'm working on my stuff, you know? But isn't that what you want? a psychic, a medium, an intuitive life coach that actually walks the talk and does her work. That's what I am. Gotta do it. Gotta do it. Thanks for watching, if you're still watching. Thanks for being here. Your spirit inspires me. Doing this work fills me with hope. It's encouragement for both of us to live our lives. It is your life after all, and you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.